Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning to those here and to those who are joining us by Facebook Live. I guess I don't have to do this now. You know, it's always good to show that you are using masks. Uh, for those who can't see, I think everyone in the congregation has a mask on or close to it. I'm Eric Loudermilk, interim pastor here at Oasis at Conway Gardens. I'm not wearing my, uh, I don't even know what you call it, invisible mic today because we have a guest speaker. Um, so I'm a little uh, winded here. I'm, I'm a little lost. So if you're a visitor either in the service today Or online, we have two options for you. The easy one is you go to our website, own your phone, oasisconwaygardens.org, no at, oasisconwaygardens.org, and click I'm new, and just tell us about your visit. Or if you're here in the service and you'd like to fill out a hard copy card, just raise your hand and one of our ushers will be glad to bring that to you. Um, hope you enjoyed the fellowship time before service. That's our new way of fellowshipping because we're not allowed to hug. Even though Joe Bell just wants to hug me, I, I just gave her a fist pump today. So um, <clears throat> we, um, I, I, I need to apologize. Last week we commemorated the people who had passed uh, during the 12 or 13 months that we were closed for COVID and we couldn't have memorial services for them. And I, I just made a huge mistake and missed someone. So today we're going to take a few minutes and open our service with a moment of silence and a song for um, Joe and Sam and William's Nana, uh, Sarah Lou Sullivan, uh, Melissa George's uh, mom, and Callie and Olivia's Nana and Myron's mother-in-law. And I apologize to the George family for missing that. So we have a slide just like we did last week, and we're going to grieve with them just for a moment while Jeremy plays. Thank you, Jeremy. <clears throat> We're still trickling in. It's good to see everybody today. Thank you for coming out despite the weather. Uh, Jackie Self had, had, still had water on her stuff when she came in, and so it's really great to have you guys coming in. Today we have a guest speaker, and I was going to introduce him 
after his song, but I think it would flow better if I would just introduce him now. We're in the middle of two series at the church. One series is Spiritually Healthy Habits, and we're all reading along this book by John Ortberg, The Life You've Always Wanted. I took a break from that series last week and gave our Easter message, and we'll resume that series next week in the um, practice of confession, confessing our faults one to another. So I would encourage you to read your chapter this week. I just found out today that my dad's reading this at home, so looking forward to going over that with you. We're also doing a series throughout the year called Heroes of the Cruciform Life. Last year we preached a series on Corinthians where Paul said, why not be defrauded? Why not lose money and put others before yourself? This was when the Corinthian church, they were suing each other in the church. And Paul said, your witness is important. Why don't you lay down your needs for the needs of others? And so out of that, we came up with this series that's supposed to be the last Sunday of every month where a guest comes in and picks someone from history and talks about them as a hero of living out that cruciform life, living a sacrificial life that's different from the culture around them. And my brother Jerry was going to be our speaker in March, But when we decided to reopen for Easter, we needed to do practice Sundays and uh, we couldn't get him down here. And we could from this point forward, we're not going to be recording messages. So we moved him to today and we'll have another speaker for the April installment of that series in two weeks. So uh, Jerry is uh, my brother. He's the younger but the wiser of the two brothers. Um. He lives the life I kind of want to live uh, in the woods, uh, has a farm. Um, some of you have heard his previous message. William, do we have that slide up? So this was our most viewed message the entire year. It was even watched in Japan, and Minnesota. If you haven't seen this message, whether you're live or online, I would encourage you to go back and watch it because 12 and a half years ago, his oldest son, Jody, took his life. And uh, shocked our family. Uh, that's, there's no words to express it. But Jerry fought and held on to his faith during that time. And uh, he's also not an unlearned man. He listens to some of the same scholars that I listen to. And after he um, shares his song, he's going to uh, teach us today about St. Augustine. Now, if you're from North Carolina, that's St. Augustine. Or Augustine of Hippo. And if you're a scholar, it's Augustine. But it's the same guy. So uh, I'm going to introduce him, let him come up now and sing for us. And then he'll bring us God's word. Jerry, would you come? Peace of steel is all I claim to be. This hammer pounds to give me form, this flame, it melts my dreams. Glow with fire and fury as I'm twisted like a vine. Shape my final form, I'm sure I'm bound to find. So dream a little, dream for me in hopes that I'll remain. Cry a little, cry for me, oh, I can bear the flame. Hurt a little, hurt for me, my future is untold, but my dreams are not the issue here, for they, the hammer holds, and the water, it cools me gray, and the hurts subdued somehow. 
have my shape, this sharpened point. What is my purpose now? And the question still remains, what am I to be? Perhaps some perfect piece of art displayed for all to see. Cry for me so I can bear the pain. Hurt a little, hurt for me. My future is untold. My dreams are not the issue here, for they the hammer holds. I do not feel this force that drives me helplessly through flesh and wood reveal burn it burns much deeper more than I can stand the reason for my Life was to take the life of a guiltless man. So dream a little, dream for me in hopes that I'll remain. Cry a little, cry for me so I can bear the pain. Hurt a My dreams are not the issue here, for they, the hammer, holds. This task before me may seem unclear, but it's my maker holds. Well, all right. Man, those lights are bright. I'm not used to that. So good morning again. Um, I'm so glad that I get this opportunity to speak to you. Um, I don't get to do this much anymore. I used to do it quite a bit. Um, my life changed drastically, and I'm getting, um, I'm healing I like to thank, I think the Lord's healing us and allow me to do this and to, to uh, get the opportunity to tell you about Jesus in a simple way. Um, we had a discussion on the way over here <laughs> about telling you guys about what I know and what I don't know. <clears throat> and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot I don't know I have to be transparent and that's, that's in my message it's later in the message but I have to be transparent with you folks I'm just a simple man Eric he encourages me a lot and he, he speaks highly of me and I appreciate it and, and for, for I guess from where I'm from and, and what I do for a living I farm, run a sawmill, truck driver I've probably got some information that some, you know, many people don't in my field, so to speak. Uh, there are others, but the point I'm trying to make is, you know, this is about Jesus. 
This is about Jesus. This is about what Christ has done for me and you in a simple, profound, <laughs> just precious, precious gift that he's given us. It's just, it's just precious. And that's what this is about this morning. And I want to make sure that you know that, that I, I, I don't want to put on airs. And I don't have any to put on, so <laughs> it's not like I can. So I'll begin. Uh, Eric asked me to speak about the cruciform life, and he asked me who I would think of. And, of course, I said C.S. Lewis and St. Augustine. And, um, but more specifically, it would be about his book, Confessions. And, and I found, I found St. Augustine, again, at that time of I was desperate. I was very desperate for something fresh and modern writers I don't know, I was just having a lot of trouble. And so I searched, and I found Lewis, and I found St. Augustine. And this message will tell you about a search for basic truths amidst cliches and euphemisms that sometimes don't hold true, okay? It's a search, it's a story about a search for the basics to live by, and my world was crumbling around me. As my world crumbled, and it seemed that there was so many holes in Christianity. And they were screaming at me, screaming to take a front seat to my faith so that it would be removed. Um, I found just a simple gospel once again. After being steeped in it all my life, uh, I just found that simple gospel again. And there's a great deal of irony in the story uh, in that my situation was complex. We had lost a son, and we had three other sons. And, of course, I had a wife that was broken, was just, just, just destroyed. And uh, it was very complicated to know how to navigate through all that. But he helped me see, St. Augustine helped me see, that to return to the cross and a simple admission of sin and a total reliance on Christ daily was so important. So a little bit about him. St. Augustine lived in the year 354 to 430 A.D. He was trained in the art of rhetoric, public speaking, and persuasive argument, and he was a master. He had a master of the Latin language. And according to his confessions, his mother was the chief, let me see if I can get this right, the chief source of spiritual influence in his life. But he rejected that until the age of, of 31 and at that point he gave his life to Christ officially and his dedication to Christianity is something that we can glean from and it's 16 here 1600 years later and it's amazing how it spoke to me fortunately for us he was a gifted writer he was a uh, thinker who persisted in transparency and he helped me to find so many answers. <clears throat> this is, <laughs> this is a, a, hard to explain, but I was lost, okay? I knew Christ, okay, and I knew Jesus had saved me, but the emotions and the tragedy overtook my life, okay? And so um, I was desperate. I was desperate for a fresh perspective, and, and I, I call it being thrown into the deep end of eternal and spiritual questions, I was on a search for answers. So, uh, St. Augustine explores so many avenues of thought, but the most frequent one that I find is, is uh, he returns to his sinful nature. He mourns, he, he grieves over that, his lack of desire to keep God's laws, which we all find in ourselves. If we'll stop, if we stop or when we stop, we find that in ourselves. Uh, a lack of desire to keep God's laws. But time and time again, time and time again, he cried out for God to look upon him with forgiveness. Now, possibly his most famous account is when he and his friends in, in their youth went to a... Uh, a uh, neighboring property and stole fruit from a tree 
And then they, you know, the fruit wasn't very good, so they threw it to the hogs. Now, I'm a hog farmer, <laughs> and I don't see a whole lot of uh, error in that. Bad fruit to feed hogs, well, that, you know, that sounds like a pretty good idea if you ask me. But he repented over this to the point when the first few times I listened to it and heard it, I rolled my eyes. What, what, what is he what is he so torp about? But it was, again, back to his sinful nature. And eventually I found myself having an understanding of his remorse. I, I began to understand it. So many of you uh, will recall my testimony, and for those that do not, it's centered around my son Jody and the events of his life and tragic death. Now, I wrestle to this day with the loss of my son, and I return to the words of St. Augustine that we are all are all sinners. The ultimate reason that Jody took his life. Is because he. Jody and I. And you. Were sinners. That's the ultimate reason. Now you guys know people that have experienced this. You know you have lost people. This is a broken sinful world. Okay. Okay. That is the ultimate reason. That's something I had to learn. Um, we are all sinners, and this is a truth that we cannot escape. Our redemption comes from Christ's death and resurrection. Eternal life for us is a gift from our Creator that originates along the lines with creation itself. God's infinite wisdom and knowledge is not hindered by our time restraints. He knows all. He sees all. All times are present to him. But in an ironic, absurd way, our first steps to him are simply to acknowledge our sin. No matter what your beliefs are. No matter what your beliefs are beyond that. I don't know, but we might have some Catholics in here. There may be some Catholics watching here. Or Baptist. Well, I think we're in a Baptist church, aren't we, Eric? Yeah. <laughs> Do you believe in eternal security? Are you a Calvinist? Do you believe in pre, pre post, or mid-trib? Do you believe in full submersion? Or will a sprinkling do the trick? Do you believe in, uh, do you go to church on Sunday morning? Some of us do. Or do you go at other times during the week? If you lived in the 1800s, I might ask, do you believe in burning witches at the stake? Or, if you're a Protestant, do you believe in hanging Catholics? Or if you're a Catholic, do you believe in hanging Protestants? No matter what your beliefs are, that's just a few. Our first steps to God is an admission of sin. And that's a daily admission. Our daily acceptance of God's truth begins with, conscious or not, hopefully it's conscious, but conscious or not, admitting we are sinful before a perfect creator. To what level you admit this is not my business. And it's not under my judgment how aware of it you are. It is, however, the daily first step in accepting what Christ has accomplished. And St. Augustine's Confessions, for me, was and is a profound reminder of our proper daily attitude toward God. What St. Augustine considered unimportant and just personal became profound for centuries to come. So, so I can't quote any of it. There's very few things I could quote verbatim, if any. But I remember reading, and of course the book is named. It's just simple confessions. That's what the, he wrote. He wrote his confessions down. And he didn't consider them at the time to be anything special. I think he said, if any read this, if any happen to read this, if any people happen to read this, you guys hear what I'm saying? <laughs> How many people have read his, his works? How many people have read confessions? Now, his confessions are the same as yours and mine. His battle with the hardships of this life were the same as ours. But he put them to paper, and now we benefit from them. His way of thinking is what was a lot more complicated than most of us. Now, I admit that. If you if you've ever if you've read a paragraph 
of his work, he, he is a, a deep philosopher. It, it is tough. It is hard to understand. Some of it, again, you're just going to roll your eyes at and wonder, what is he talking about? And why is he talking about it? It, um, it can be very complex. But, his, but, but I believe that the cause of his impact on the world should be credited to God's hand, handing, excuse me, credited to God's hand leading his broken life. St. Augustine's accomplishments can be attributed to his line of work, yes, and his parents' desire for him to get on in the world, that is a part of it. But a person could say that St. Augustine had no idea of the impact of his writings. But God did, and he placed the pieces of this man's life together like a puzzle. Plain and simple, he was a man just like me, who was at war with the cares of this world. His profound effect stems from a desire to understand God's word and God's ways, as many of us do, as all of us do at some point. He was doing the same thing. He was a man living this life. So one of the greatest accomplishments we can have is to influence our world. Now, my world's small. I don't know about your world. Uh, the people that I know in this room, I would dare to guess that their world is bigger than me. Okay? I got a small little world down there in Seagrove in Why Not, North Carolina. Okay? But I have a chance this morning to say to you, choose Christ. Then in turn, you can influence your world. And that's the same thing that St. Augustine did. He just didn't know how profound and how many people would read his writings. So if we can somehow spur one another on to, to, uh, another on to rely on God's forgiveness through his son Jesus, what greatness have we accomplished? Uh, the events of my life, I, I, I'm betting there's a, quite a few of you out there that can relate to this. The events of my life 12 years ago, they, they want to force an agenda on me. The enemy wants to use the tragedies in our lives, the hardships in our lives, to force his agenda on us. My predisposition to depression and self-loathing <laughs> and add that to my sinful nature and the tragic loss of my oldest son relentlessly present themselves every morning trying desperately to own me and shape every moment of my day. But St. Augustine gave me or presented me with an ultimate answer to ultimate questions. His writings offer me another chance to be defined by Christ. Now, we can so easily be defined by our world. And we do. We do that. That is, one of our, that is one of our sins. That's one of our faults, to not allow Christ to define us. But St. Augustine helped me to understand that I didn't have to be. I don't have to be today defined by the, by the sin in this world or the sin in my life or the loss of my son or my health issues or traffic or the phone calls that I get that tell me that my, my car warranty is just about to run out and if I will respond, I'll get an extension on it. <laughs> you guys don't get those? Oh, you do? Okay. All right. It was kind of quiet, so I wasn't sure. Yeah. Um, I choose to allow Christ to define me. Now, it is moment by moment. They get longer. They get more often. They, be, they become more frequent, yes. And I give thanks for that. And I'm very, very grateful that God, he allows me to understand that. You can do that too. We can be defined by Christ no matter what goes on in our life. <clears throat> I had spent the better part of my life reading God's word. I had been a leader in the church. I had served in many areas of ministry. And after 40 years of being steeped in the Bible and in church, I found myself standing before the most basic questions. That of eternity 
and a purpose for this life. And in reference to this series, I, again, I have to speak of what I know, not what I don't know. There's so much I don't know. I acknowledge that. The mysteries of Scripture, I mean, I can't even touch. I can't even begin to tell you what I don't know. And, of course, as you get older, you realize the things that you, you just you know less. That's what you learn is you don't know anything. But you guys know that. You've heard that. And it's the truth. But radically different from the self-glorifying world where we are taught and pressed on every side to succumb to self-esteem, self-reliance, self-gratification, self, self, self. Everywhere we turn, self. I, I was paradoxically pressed and impressed by the simple words, I'm a sinner. I am a sinner before a perfect creator. Now, radicalism is frowned on. It's frowned on in this world. Yet to humble ourselves and admit we are sinful and need Jesus is as radical as anything I can find. Now, you look around you in this world to simply say, I'm a sinner. I'm, I'm not perfect. I'm not all that. I'm, I'm in need of of a savior i'm in need of a savior you guys know that and you know how hard that is to say i'm in need of a savior for this world to say that it's very difficult and i find it to be radical and if you look at it i believe you will too and this attitude is again it's the paradox to me shines so bright this attitude is best lived out by jesus and he was perfect and he was <laughs> He was humble. He laid his life down. And he, he didn't have to admit he was sinful because he wasn't. But he lived that life of humility and laying his life down. And he accepted the attitude of humility, quite frankly, and lived a radical life full of pain, suffering, death. And he, all, he did it all in obedience to his father. And again, God's power was made perfect. In, his, in what seemed to be weakness in Christ, when he laid down his life, uh, it appears that if you look at it, I guess the first few times we look at it, it appears that you know we took his life, that the Romans took his life, but he laid it down willingly. He says that. It's the very basis of our faith, laying down our life, being humble. Augustine gives thanks to God for mixing bitterness into his life. He gives praise to God for mixing much bitterness into his cup of pleasure, is what he says. He admits that God's hand of discipline is to be appreciated for God's disciplines those he calls his children. Now, I find no such mentality in the worldly plan for life. I don't find it. I don't see it. We are pressed on every side to seek pleasure, not pain. St. Augustine takes a painful look at himself and in turn has to return to Christ every time. This is very different from the world we live in, and I believe it is the way to heavenly joy. I believe it is the way to abundant life that we read about, that we hear about. However, it is a reality that can produce adversity okay it can it can uh, produce hardships in our life in god's infinite wisdom he allows us to undergo hardships now you guys know this right you, anybody here experience hardships no well y'all are quiet this morning you guys must be living the life no hardships out there huh well i've experienced some i know you have you probably most likely you're dealing with Quite a few right now. Yeah. Um, but he allows that in our lives. If you choose this path, you will make yourself vulnerable to God and you will make yourself vulnerable to uh, each other, to other humans. Okay? God and man will take advantage of you. We do that to each other. If you open up yourself to man, chances are very good that man will abuse and use you. God will do the same, yet two differences come with God's actions. He has permission to do whatever he wants to with you, which I am thankful for. I have a perspective now 
Again, it comes and goes in moments, okay? Be sure that you understand that. But I have a perspective now that I give thanks. When I bust my finger on the sawmill or my blood pressure's up and the doctor's fussing at me, or again, the phone calls about the, about the car warranty, I have a perspective that allows me to see that he, he allows those things in my life for a reason. And the second reason it's different with God is his end game is to give us life. We're not going to be here for very long, folks. Now, some of us, time is shorter for some of us than others, right? Now, I'm 52. So at best, I might, I, if I stretch it out pretty good, I might have 40 years left. Uh, but I like my I like my pork, you know what I'm saying? I like my bacon and... You know what I'm saying? You guys know what I'm talking about. So at best, I mean, I, you know, another 40 years, maybe. We're not going to be here that long. We were meant for heaven, and that's where we're going to spend eternity. His end game, again, I want to say this, his end game is to give you and me life. Okay? The profoundity of this is, is that we do not and we never will deserve it. That's another thing that St. Augustine taught me. In a, short, in a short time, he taught me that I've been a Christian since I was 12. That's 40 years. That's 40 years. And I'm no more deserving today than I was the day that I received Christ. I am still amazed at the simplicity of the gospel and almost as much amazed at how we complicate it. We make up excuses, a list of excuses that are longer than our own arm to avoid the process of confession. And I urge you today to take a long look at this. Whether you're a scholar or a farmer or a truck driver, you know, if you're retired if you've been a Christian for years, or if this is your first opportunity, if this is your first chance, I urge you to take a good, long, hard look at this. This is all for your benefit. He has come to give us life. We were made to be in an intimate relationship with our Creator. That is his purpose for creating us. That is the reason he came and died a criminal's death. We were made for his pleasure. Pray with me, please. Heavenly Father, we stop for one moment and give you thanks. We thank you for your son, and we come in the name of your son, Jesus. We pray, Lord, that by your spirit, that would forever and always be in front of us. Yes, that we are sinners. And that daily we should confess that and give that to you. And there's no one excluded. Me, for, first and foremost, okay? I know that I'm a sinner before you, but I also know the precious gift that you've given us. And I give you thanks that you gave me St. Augustine in a time when I really needed him. And it allowed me to see that you, you love us. You love us. You made a way for us when there was no way. When, when there was no way for Jerry, you made a way. And I just want to stop and say thank you and give you praise for that. And I pray that we would take that with us wherever we go. Whether it be to work or the beach or the golf course or the hospital or home, that we could just take it with us and... and Give it away, maybe one person at a time. Just give it away. Just give away Christ and that love and that acceptance and that forgiveness. Help us to give it away, Lord Jesus. We give you thanks in your name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. <clears throat> The terms liberal and conservative are 
really bad terms. They, they put people in pigeonholes. But in the modern world, those who we would want to put in the pigeonhole of liberal, their biggest temptation sin is to deny the resurrection, deny that Jesus was divine, all those supernatural things. But conservatives, just like in the Bible, the Pharisees, conservatives have a number one temptation too. And that is the temptation to resorting to think that we can live good enough to merit Jesus' worth. And we're Southern Baptists, and we classify ourselves as conservatives. So I'm telling you that what Jerry's telling us today hits on the nail, hits the nail on the head. We're so tempted to think that it's our righteousness. And here, one of the greatest writers, I probably should have prepped you guys, but St. Augustine is, is one of the most celebrated scholars in history. And what he focused on was confessing his own sin. When we redid our service order to coming back live after COVID, we decided to put worship after our messages so that we worship in response to the word we've heard. And um, we were doing a time of confession in our worship, but beforehand it was before the service. And I didn't even think this morning that our time of confession would come right after your message on the confessions of Augustine. And next week, I'm going to be speaking on the spiritually healthy habit of confessing our faults to one another. Sounds to me like there's a God who loves us, who's organizing all of this, right? That's what he does. We spent 10, 12 hours yesterday in the car driving, talking, never talked about how that came together. So this is your time. Whether you're a follower of Jesus, maybe you've been here your whole life, maybe you're one of the younger ones, and you've never made a decision, it doesn't matter. You can confess your sins during this time. And if it's your initial time, you can say, Jesus, I accept your forgiveness for my sin, and I want you to come into my life. And if you're a regular believer, this is a time to go, God, here's some things I did this week, or something I did a year ago, I'm just now reminded of. And say, God, I want to confess those sins to you. Let's take a moment of silence and what during that time of silence, I want you to examine your heart and then you can begin to pray and I'll lead us in prayer. And then we'll turn to a few other prayer things and then we'll, we'll go into worship. Let's, let's bow our heads. Examine our, our hearts. Just think about the things and bring to the Lord where you failed him. Lord, I confess to you that probably one of the number one sins I've been dealing with in the last couple of months is anger. Not that anger itself is a sin, but when it's focused on self, stop bothering me, anger. That's a sin. And I ask that you forgive me of that sin. I know that I'm saved. I'm so grateful for this salvation. But I want to live for you in gratitude for what you've done. So I confess that sin to you today. Lord, your word says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we bring these faults of ours to you today and we ask that you would cleanse us of those. Just take that moment. Maybe it's been years since you've prayed. Take a moment now. Confess those things to the Lord. I encourage you, this is what church is. Church is the number one place where we want to put on a mask and be something we're not. Confess to God where you've blown it, whether it's lack of belief or apathy in your faith. Maybe some things in your married life. To, Patty will tell you right now, and, and she doesn't like me to mention her name. I'm so sorry, sweetheart. But she is the victim of my sin of anger. And I confess that today. Maybe you have things in your marriage you need to confess to the Lord to humble yourself. Father, we worship you and thank you 
for such crazy good news. The word gospel means good news, a proclamation, a special report, as we would think today in news, that the Almighty God, the creator of the universe, took on human flesh, even the flesh of a baby, the most vulnerable way a human can come to grow up and die for us humans who continually choose over and over to disobey you. And why did you do that? Because you are a God of love. It's crazy, but it's true. Help us to remember that it's pure grace alone that gives us salvation. And that grace gives us a confidence to love our neighbors in the Curry Ford Hourglass District or wherever we live. Thank you for that, God. Help us to live in that. To, as preachers say, I preach the gospel to myself every day. Now, Lord, I want to turn to our world, and I pray, Lord, that you would continue to empower researchers and doctors to fight this evil pandemic. I thank you for the progress made, but I pray it would continue. I lift up our national leaders and our nation. I don't agree with things that our current administration believes in. I don't agree with a lot the last administration, but I lift them up, and I pray you would empower our national leaders. I pray that you would empower our state leaders, the, the mayor of Orlando, mayor of Orange County, and even the people who in charge of the market district here in Curry Ford. Lord, I lift up the sick in our congregation. Laurie Williams and Faye Henderson are pretty sick today. Thankfully, we know that Laurie doesn't have COVID and Faye probably doesn't because she's been vaccinated, but we pray that you would heal them. Others today that I'm not aware of, we, we lift up Marty Preston's family at the loss of her mother-in-law. We pray that you would heal our community, Lord Jesus. So God, now as we turn, is a time to worship you for what you have done. We ask that you would fill this place with your spirit and hear our songs of praise. Jeremy. This is, sing with us as we sing, Good, Good Father. I've heard in stories of what they think you're like but I've heard tender whispers of love in the dead of night you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone you're a good good father it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. I've seen many searching for answers, far and wide. But I know we're all searching for answers Only you provide Cause you know just what we need Before we say a word You're a good, good Father It's who you are It's who you are It's who you are And I'm loved by you it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am, you're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am, you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways to us you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of ways to us. 
love so undeniable. Love so undeniable, I can hardly speak. Peace so unexplainable, I can hardly think as you call me. Deeper still as you call me. Deeper still as you call me. Deeper still into love. Love, love, love. You're a good, good Father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good Father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to Continue to worship. I just praise God for His gift to us of Jesus. And He came to save us. What a beautiful name He has. You were the Word at the beginning, one with God the Lord. Your hidden glory in creation Now revealed in you are Christ What a beautiful name it is What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus Christ my King what a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us, so Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, my sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is, what a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Death could not hold you, the veil tore before you, the silence, the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. You have no rival. You have no equal, now 
now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. You have no rival. You have no equal. Now and forever, God, you Yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory, yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Hopefully we can get the lyrics up for this next one. Who you say I am, I thank God that we can call ourselves children of God and that we are chosen, not forsaken, and that we can say that we are sons and daughters of God. No lyrics? say I am. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Free at last, He has ransomed me. His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me yes he died for me who the sun sets free oh is free indeed i'm a child of god yes i am in my father's house in my father's house there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. I'm chosen. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am who you say I am. Who the sun sets free. Oh, is free indeed. 
I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house. In my Father's house. There's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. may be seated you know so much has changed um, and we're trying very hard to um, adjust things to the church to draw in people who aren't in church you know and all this new technology and what have we said over and over we will have good problems so it's okay that the lyrics didn't come up uh, we'll fix that and we will be doing hymns in the future as well we have to do some contemporary music if we're going to bring in people who would normally come into church. Amen? Who God says we are. God says that we are loved in Him. And so we want you to remember that this week. Ushers, will you come forward? Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your goodness to us. We thank you for your grace. And as we give these gifts back to you, God, we ask, please, God, use these to reach this neighborhood. Let us find new opportunities with these funds to tell this neighborhood that you love them for just who they are. We thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. and 
Donna close by. <laughs> what goes around comes around. So when they, um, when the church uh, voted to ask me to be interim, they, they came out in the hall to get me and I was in the restroom <laughs> and someone came back in and, and yelled out where I was. So I basically embarrassed Donna. Um, Uh, would you step out and then when she comes in we'd like to see both of you down front please <laughs> oh, she's come in. I don't know if you were trying to, to buddy up to me Jeremy but some of those slides had Yosemite National Park on them Yosemite Valley, Valley. my son's here today and we're planning on hiking part of Yosemite this summer so cool brownie points so come forward Coxes please Donna and Glenn <clears throat> right up here. Chuck and Darlene, it's good to see y'all. For weeks, I called Glenn Chuck, and I don't know why. Donna, when did you start coming to church here? 1961. 1861? 18. And how about people? Somewhere around 1978. 78. And for our greeters, what, what got Glenn... To stay in the church was the two men who greeted him at the door and the way they greeted him. Um, this was supposed to be a surprise. I don't know how much it's a surprise, but we have a luncheon prepared at the Kiwanis Club next door. We're not using our fellowship hall because we're blessed with the good problem of having three other churches worship with us. So Marty Preston and her daughter have catered a lunch for us. Did you know this? Good. So it is a surprise. We couldn't surprise him. And... Um, we're sorry we didn't announce it to all of you beforehand, but like how much of a, a surprise it was just continued to morph. Um, but we are celebrating today the decades of music ministry that Glenn and Donna have given to us. Uh, they're not going anywhere. Uh, I have a sealed document saying they will not leave. <laughs> Glenn is a leading, he's on the leadership team, but he also leads the greeters and ushers. And Donna's been serving in the nursery some with the thousands of babies we have, right? <laughs> but could you guys just stand and show them your appreciation for all that they've done for us? I, I don't think we have words to express uh, how much we're glad of this. And I know this was actually a hard transition, even though you guys can be seated. Even though you announced retirement and it takes us two years to find someone and we're so tickled to have Jeremy. It's still a rough transition, but today is your day. So it'll take the stage hands a little time to reset the stage for Christo to come in, but you're all invited to lunch at Kiwanis. Let's pray, and then the band will send us out. Actually, I'm going to pray over you guys. Is that okay? Father, thank you for Glenn and Donna Cox and for their family and the legacy that they have. Lord, they've impacted so many lives and they continue to do and we just want them to feel loved today and appreciated for all that they've done may we love on them well today we pray that you bless everyone as they go about their week in this week we love you jesus in your name amen go in peace
Bring all your failures, bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting, God so loved the world. Hey everyone, thanks again for joining us for our service this week, and we hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, I just want to quickly encourage you to like our videos on Facebook and on YouTube, subscribe to our channel on YouTube, and share these videos to your social media accounts. This is not for us to get more popular or to make money off of them, but this is a way for us in a digital age to share the gospel. This is a way to share the good news of Jesus Christ to a broken and hurting world. Thanks again for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe to social media, share these videos, Thank you guys again and have a great week.